Okay, so in a previous video, we established that this torque speed characteristic that we called it was an effective way to operate the vehicle. And we established that in the first region, as you can see, this region labeled CF, uh, the force was kept constant and then the force was decreased inversely proportional to the speed while the power was kept constant in that region um, after some base speed. And the base speed, again, was a property of the motor or the engine that we were operating with. So in this video, what we want to do is we want to take a look at the uh, the requirements of the power plant, basically. So assuming that we're operating with this type of with this type of um, method, let's say, we want to be able to understand how uh, how much power do we need? Uh, how do we determine that? What are all these quantities based on? And to do that, we start with the tractive force. So let's say Ft, and the reason I'm working with the force and not the torque is because I'm going to need to use Newton's law, and it's, I mean, the, the, the drag and the, the rolling resistance and all the resistive forces are determined in terms of force and not torque. So it's just an easier approach to take if we start with tor uh, force here instead of torque. Uh, but basically what you have is we can define the following. We can say that Ft is going to be equal to Pt max divided by Vb, and that is when the speed is less than or equal to VB, and it's equal to because it's a continuous function. So you see this is a continuous function. It doesn't break up anywhere. And PT max, uh, sorry, FT when it's greater than VB is going to be PT max over V. So as the speed increases, the force decreases, which is exactly what this uh, region here tells me. And this will happen when V is less, uh, sorry, V is greater than VB and it's less than some maximum because of course your vehicle can't just keep accelerating forever and just achieve an infinite maximum speed so we can say that this is the top speed and this is the base uh, speed obviously we know that this term here is actually FT max which is obvious from the plot on the left side and with this, uh, I guess you can also say that PT max is the maximum uh, power of the plant, but that's kind of implied, I guess, in this case. So what we can do is the driver or the controller or, well, I guess when we when we drive vehicle or we operate vehicles, we become an extension of the control. But there is it can, there's an internal control that controls the speed, the amount of power, the force, like we don't sit there when we're driving a vehicle and say exert this much force uh, for this duration of time. We sit there and we kind of just press the gas and we have this very, uh, this very, uh, I guess, uh, low resolution feedback where it just feels like we're fast enough. And, and it, well, there's, I mean, there's usually speedometers and all that kind of stuff that tell you when you're fast enough or not. But for a lot of people, I hope... Um, they're also able to understand when they're going too fast. And if they don't, obviously the speedometer there is, is there to tell you that. Uh, but please, guys, make sure to check your speedometers while you're driving. Make sure you're not speeding uh, to save lives. But I digress. So let's go back to our equations and what we're dealing with. So, right, uh, the like I was saying, the, the driver or the controller can set either the force or the power. You can't set both. So it's either PT max is set or FT max is set. And the driver slash controller, and when I say that, I mean the internal driver and controller of the vehicle, um, can set those things. Uh, but the motion of the vehicle, regardless of however you choose to set those things, the motion of the vehicle is described by our favorite equation so far, is this Newton's law FT minus FR. But what I want to do in this case is I want to do something a little bit different. And I want to say that FR is equal to some beta 1 plus beta 2 V squared. Now in previous videos we used K1 and K2, but that was for the entire right side. This is just for FR. And the reason I'm doing this is I want to separate these two forces because I need the, the, the tractive force. Because remember in this case the tractive force is not constant throughout this entire region. it's There's two different parameters, or there's two different quantities, I should say, and in different regions, it'll have different equations. So we can't assume this is constant. And if you remember in that previous video, I also mentioned that you can only use that equation with K1 and K2 if Ft is a constant. If it's not, then you have to consider it uh, for what it actually is. 
like we're going to do in this case. So if we have beta 1 and beta 2, and if I substitute that into this equation and I rearrange the expression, and then I'll end up with an integral um, that I can solve, well, I can attempt to solve. And what I'm interested in is I'm interested in how long it takes the vehicle to start from zero, to start from steady, st or standstill, I should say, and to reach some steady state speed Vf. So the expression, I mean, if you just rearrange whatever you have here plus substituting that in, so you get Ft minus beta 1 minus beta 2 V squared. And this, we can say that it takes Tf seconds for that to happen. So what is this? This is from 0 to Vf meters per second in Tf seconds. So that's what we're trying to sort of uh, model here. And Tf and Vf are again these steady state type of parameters, so in most cases we say that steady state is 100 kilometers an hour um, and and we go with that because that's usually a good measure of, of what it is of, of, of a sufficiently large speed uh, starting from zero, I guess. But now Ft has two different uh, conditions, right? So Ft is modeled by this. So in one case it's a constant, in the other case it depends on speed. So we can go take this integral one step further and we can uh, substitute that into there. So we'll end up with from zero to Vb this is dv, ft is a constant, so it's pt max divided by vb minus b beta 1 minus beta 2 v squared. And from uh, vb to vf, this is a different expression now, uh, so this is dv, and this is now pt max. Remember, we decrease the force in this region, so this is going to be divided by v, the same v that's up there. And this is beta 1 minus beta 2 v squared, as it was previously. And the right side of the integral is fairly simple to solve. It's just Tf. So now this is a challenging integral to solve. This one is not, I mean, it, I mean it's still quite lengthy, but you can still solve it because this term is constant and this is v squared, so you can have some trigonometric substitution there. But this one, as far as I understand, there is no real convenient analytic um, expression for this. So what you can do is you can do some numerical analysis or you can do some series representation and solve it that way. But rather than do that, what we're going to do is we're going to make some simplification. So before we do the make simplification, we can say that this is because this is in the constant force region. So this is CF region. And this is, remember, the CP region which is also evident based on our integral limits. So what simplification am I going to make? I'm going to make the simplification that basically says this and this. So both of these are the road load, right? So what we can do is we can consider an ideal case. Let's say there is no road load. What are the requirements of our, uh, of our vehicle then? The reason we're going to do that is because, the, again, these integrals are difficult to solve and they give they don't give much insight into what's going on um, because, again, they're difficult to solve and if we do solve them, they're not going to give us much insight because they're going to be some fairly complicated expressions. So if we do that, we can ignore the resistance for now and then we'll bring it back later. And the resistance is usually small when the vehicle starts to accelerate from a standstill because, remember, uh, this... this uh, fr depends on v squared as well as beta 1. Beta 1 is usually small compared to everything else. Uh, and beta 2 v squared, because v squared is going to be 0 or close to 0 or very small, the term is going to be, uh, it's not going to, it, it, it's okay if we neglect it, I guess, is, is the point we're trying to make here. So if we do that, we end up with the following expression. So we have tf is equal to delta m from 0 to vb. Uh, v b d v divided by p t max, which is about as simple of an integral to solve uh, as 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 ever. And sorry, this one's not going from zero. This one's going from v b to v f, and this here is going to be v d v divided by p t max. 
right? Which is also a very simple integral to solve. Not as simple as the first one, but still simple nonetheless. So we can solve this expression, and we can solve it, and we can we can solve it for two different parameters. And, and I mean, it's the same equation. You can just rearrange it, really. So in one case, you have tf, because it's important to know how long this thing takes to accelerate. Uh, this should be 2 pt max. And you have inside this set of parentheses vf squared plus vb squared, which can also give rise to the equation pt max is equal to delta m. And this is probably the more, uh, I don't want to say more useful, but I guess it's more insightful because well, I guess they're both insightful depending on what you're looking for. So it's let's not let's not discriminate against equations here. So what does this tell us? This tells us one, it tells us that the maximum tractive power is dependent directly on the steady state speed you're trying to achieve, as well as the base speed of your motor or engine. It tells you it's also inversely proportional to the amount of time you take. So the amount of power needed will decrease as the amount of time you have to reach a steady state increases. So let's say we have, remember in, the, in a previous video, we had some requirements from the US PNGV or something like that, and there were certain acceleration times. So let's say we want to achieve, let's say we want to achieve 100 kilometers an hour, which is a reasonable VF, and we want to do it in 10 seconds, right? That will give you a certain PT max, let's call that PT max one, right? So PT max one will give you that. But now let's say you want to achieve 100 kilometers an hour, but you want to do that in 20 seconds, right? If you have PT max two. Now it's very clear that PT max two will be sm will be smaller than PT max one. So, so these are the kind of uh, insights that an equation like this gives us, where solving the integral in, a, in, in the previous form wouldn't really give us much, uh, wouldn't really give us much to work with. So there'd be no reason to have that expression. So this is our equation for PT max, and it allows us to determine the power plant requirements based on the desired acceleration time. So the kind of the kind of uh, the ideas that I just showed you about the different powers and the different voltages, and, or sorry, different velocities, not voltages, um, those uh, those are ex expressed by this power equation here. And we can say that Vf is typically, uh, we can say typically this is, like I mentioned earlier, this is 100 kilometers an hour, and a good conversion to know is that 3.6 is the conversion between kilometers an hour and tw uh, meters per second, so this is 27.8. Eight, I believe, or it's twenty-seven point seven, is it uh, meters per uh, meters per second? And this equation is in meters per second, so so you should make sure your units are consistent with that. So what did we do previously to get this equation? We ignored the road load, which is not accurate, right? So we want to make a more accurate model of our power requirements because this is ideal, and in reality, we're going to face uh, a different. The force is going to be different than. It is um, than it is in uh, in the case that we've presented here. So, what we need to do then is we need to ensure that the uh, the power requirements can meet the conditions of the road load as well. So, what we're going to do then is we're going to just say that hey, why don't we just take the power equation that we have? So, let's take the power equation that we have, which is PT max is equal to delta m divided by 2tf, and this is vf squared plus vb squared. And then, why don't we just throw in the road load equations as they exist, uh, c0 plus c1 vf squared times vf plus 1 half rho af cd vf cubed. Now why is this allowed? Well, first of all, anything is allowed, right? So you can do whatever you want, as long as it makes sense and it's a reasonable approximation. But you'll notice that this is the power loss at v equals vf. Now if you're saying that you want to rate this motor for a steady state speed, vf, Let's call it. That's what we've. That's what, that's what the whole purpose of VF is. That it's a steady state speed. Then we can say. We mean it's not. We can say it's. It's obvious that the 
the the, the parameters of the ro uh, the road load or the resistive forces the resistive forces that are speed dependent terms which in the case of power losses it's all speed dependent you can say that those losses will be the largest at the highest speed now vf if you're designing for vf why don't you just say okay these are my losses at that speed then if i can overcome the ideal part which is what we did here so this is the ideal so i guess you can say this is ideal assuming no losses and if i just add the losses that i expect to exist when i'm at that steady state speed then i have a complete expression for the overall uh, tractive power requirement and so that's exactly what we can do here so that these losses here that are that are highlighted by this red box or this red underline i guess uh, these losses will only be smaller than this for lower speed meaning if i can design my motor for or if i my, if my motor can provide or my engine can provide this maximum maximum tractive power then i should be able to deal with anything less than this too because this is the worst case scenario right so this is the sort of uh i guess this is a very engineering um type of analysis where we just kind of decide okay let's think about it ideally and now let's think about it in terms of the worst case which is usually a good idea to to think about things uh, as they apply in the worst case so what did we do in, the, in this whole video we revisited this idea of the torque speed characteristic we defined this force uh, or the tractive force i should say in terms of the the power and the speed uh, we took our favorite newton's law equation and we used this sort of approach here of the resistive forces and um, and and we determined an expression uh, across the two regions remember now because this tractive force is not constant in the previous uh, expression we had it was constant in this case it's not constant um, but we determined this expression and, and using this expression we were able to determine how long it takes the vehicle to reach steady state as well as the power requirements of the vehicle um, for those steady state conditions. And so this expression here can be used to determine the size, I guess, or the capacity or the ratings of your, of your motor. So that's it for this video. I hope you found this to be helpful. If you haven't already, um, hit that subscribe button and like to support the channel. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, or you can always reach out and send me an email. Um, and other than that, we'll see you in the next one.